Welcome to the spine-tingling world of our unholy tales, where fear takes its darkest form and every shadow holds a chilling secret. We are your guides through the twisted and nightmarish tales that will keep you on the edge of your seat, clutching your pillow for dear life. Get ready to embark on a journey into the abyss of your deepest fears as we explore the realms of the supernatural, the macabre and the unknown. The fading summer sunlight cast long shadows as I pedalled my bike down the quiet suburban streets of Weeping Ridge. As the houses grew farther apart and the woods crept in, I picked up speed, leaning into the curves. I was headed to the old playground on the edge of town to meet up with my friends. We would hang out there until dusk before biking home for dinner. Just as I zipped around a bend, I spotted an ice cream truck parked at the side of the road up ahead. That was strange. Ice cream trucks usually didn't come out this way. I slowed down as I approached, gravel crunching under my tyres. The truck was painted a chipped and faded pink, with a giant swirly soft-serve cone on the side. The words, sweet treats, were written in loopy cursive letters, though the S had partially worn off. As I drew nearer, the truck suddenly switched on its tinny music, a creepy, slowed-down version of Pop Goes the Weasel echoed through the quiet street. I shivered, even though the evening air remained warm and humid. The music stopped abruptly, leaving only the buzzing of cicadas in the surrounding woods. That's when I noticed the truck's window was open. Inside sat a girl who looked about my age, maybe twelve or thirteen, with long, strawberry-blonde braids. She wore an old-fashioned blue gingham dress and licked a swirly ice-cream cone, dripping down her fingers. She saw me staring and smiled. "'Want some ice-cream?' she called out. "'Come closer. I have all your favourite flavours. I hesitated, gripping my handlebars tighter. Something about her smile made me uneasy, like she was laughing at some private joke I didn't understand. "'Oh, don't be scared,' she said with a giggle. It's free ice cream. Get it while you can. Before I could reply, she held out her cone towards me, offering me a lick. Just then, the truck's engine roared to life. I jumped back, my heart racing. Had someone else been inside starting it? I hadn't noticed anyone else in the front cab. The girl let out another shrill laugh. Next time, then, she said as the truck lurched forward. I'll be seeing you real soon. The music switched back on as the truck drove off down the quiet suburban street. I stood frozen, listening to the chilling tune growing fainter and fainter until it disappeared completely. Finally, I got back on my bike and continued on towards the playground, puzzled over what had just happened. The girl's cracked lips and missing front teeth flashed through my mind. Had that been blood or cherry syrup running down her chin? The details grew fuzzy the more I tried to remember. Soon I spotted my friends already hanging out on the swings and jungle gym. I parked my bike and ran over to tell them about the strange encounter with the ice cream truck, but as I described the fading pink paint and the girl's haunting smile, my friends stared at me like I was crazy. Dude, there aren't any ice cream trucks out here, said my friend Ryan, taking a sip of his soda. Not since Mr Wiggles got shut down when we were kids, added our friend Meg. She gave an exaggerated shiver. That guy was such a creep. My parents never let me go near his truck after Billy Marsh went missing. I frowned, remembering the urban legend about the kid who vanished one summer after chasing down Mr Wiggles's famous chipwich truck. The police had questioned the elderly ice cream man, but could never prove anything. Days later, Mr Wiggles was found dead from an apparent suicide. After that, the brightly coloured trucks stopped roaming our neighbourhood. Had the pink truck I saw been Mr Wiggles's old vehicle back on the prowl? And who was the girl inside serving blood-streaked ice cream with a sinister smile? A howling wind swept through the trees as the sky began to dim. The first stars peeked out as dusk settled over our small town, nestled at the edge of the forest. A chorus of crickets and spring-peepers emerged from the thickets, Soon we grabbed our bikes, 
racing each other down the wooded back roads of Weeping Ridge. But as I pedalled hard against the growing darkness, I couldn't shake the chilling encounter from my mind. Later that night, I awoke to strange music drifting through my open bedroom window, the familiar warped melody of Pop Goes the Weasel. I bolted upright, clutching my blankets. The music grew louder, directly below on my quiet suburban street. Squinting into the darkness, I spotted a faded pink ice cream truck parked under the dim glow of a street lamp. My blood turned to ice. I leapt out of bed to get a better look. As I crept towards the window, the music stopped abruptly, and a girl's shrill laugh pierced the silence. I caught a glimpse of strawberry braids swinging as the truck peeled off down the road and disappeared into the night. The next evening, Ryan and Meg didn't show up to meet me at the playground. I waited almost until dusk, getting more worried by the minute. It wasn't like them to not even text if they had other plans. I decided to bike by Ryan's house, which was on my way home, even though he only lived a few blocks over. As I pedalled down his tree-lined street, I spotted a familiar faded pink ice cream truck parked along the curb. My stomach dropped. Before I could get a closer look, it switched on its music and peeled away into the growing darkness. I raced towards Ryan's house, leaping off my bike on his front lawn. The windows were dark. No one answered the frantic pound of my fist against his front door. Where was everyone? Finally, Mrs. Porter from next door cracked opened her window. Oh, honey, didn't you hear? She called down to me. Such an awful tragedy. Ryan's parents got into a terrible accident earlier today. They still haven't found his dear little sister. Missing, they say. Her voice trailed off as I jumped back on my bike and raced towards Meg's house. As I turned down her street, I spotted the truck once again. It was parked farther down, pink paint almost glowing in the fading light, though I was still too far away to see inside. Suddenly, the ice cream truck revved its engines and peeled away. As it drove past me, I barely made out a small shape in the passenger seat next to the driver, face pressed against the glass. A mop of strawberry blonde braids framed a pale face. Meg. Wait! I yelled after the truck. Stop! I pedalled faster and faster, lungs aching. But the truck only sped up, blue exhaust choking the air. The warped melody of Pop Goes the Weasel echoed through the quiet suburban street. I raced after it until we passed the last house on the lane. The paved road abruptly ended, nothing but dirt and thick forest ahead. As dusk faded to blackness, I still heard the truck's music winding through the trees, beckoning me into the darkness. I never saw Meg, Ryan or the ice cream truck girl again. Eventually the police gave up searching for them, the neighbourhood grew plagued by more and more strange disappearances as the summer wore on. Lost pets, stolen bicycles, children that wandered too far past the tree line. Soon that hollow melody would drift through our streets at dusk, echoing faintly through the dense forest, and another child would vanish by dawn. Almost two months after my friends disappeared, I lay wide awake late one steamy August night, too terrified to sleep with my window open, in case I heard that spine-chilling music approach. Around 1am, something woke me from an uneasy dream. The sound of an engine rumbling just below. I leapt out of bed and ran to peek through the curtains. There it was, the faded pink ice cream truck, parked across the street underneath the pale glow of the streetlight. As I stared down at it, it suddenly seemed dilapidated, sagging heavily to one side with rust eating away at the edges. That's when I noticed the vehicle had no driver. The front seats stood completely empty, but in the serving window I spotted a familiar face. The girl with long strawberry braids stared up at my window and waved. I staggered backwards, choking on a scream. Without warning, the truck revved violently to life. As if guided by an invisible force, it peeled off down the quiet suburban street. 
I raced to the window just in time to see its taillights fade into the darkness, heading towards the dirt roads that led deep into the forest. The abandoned truck was eventually discovered months later, when a team of search volunteers followed the faint warped strains of Pop Goes the Weasel woven through the dense trees. Vines had overgrown the faded pink exterior. Inside, they found a stash of bloody children's clothing, along with a half-eaten chip which melted across the passenger seat. Soon afterwards, the neighbourhood returned to normal as if nothing had happened, but I could not forget what happened to Ryan and Meg. At fifteen, I saved up enough money mowing lawns to buy an old car of my own. The first night I drove it, I went out searching for my long-lost friends. Instead, I found the haunted ice cream truck. Its twisted carnival music echoed through the darkness as I followed the sound down an old dirt road choked by thickets and vines. My headlights came upon the abandoned truck tilted on its side in a small clearing nearly consumed by vegetation. As I stared at its faded pink exterior now flecked with rust, suddenly the driver's side door creaked open. An unseen force ripped it clean off its hinges, the loud screech of metal piercing the air. Then, movement in the shadows. A small figure crawled out from the rotting truck, strawberry braids swinging as the girl hoisted herself out with long, spindly limbs, her gingham dress now muddy and tattered, hangs of loose skin and bone with hollow eyes that reflected my headlights with an unearthly sheen. She crept towards me, her skeletal torso making awful clicking noises. When she smiled, her teeth looked sharpened to fine points like an animal's. She raised something towards me. I realised with horror it was a half-eaten chip witch, now crawling with maggots. We've been waiting for you, the girl rasped, black ichor dripping from her grinning mouth. Welcome back, for some sweet treats. Suddenly, more skeletal creatures began crawling out from the rusted truck, their wet bones glistening in the darkness. Dozens of them, snarling and snapping. Flesh hung in ribbons off their young faces as they poured towards me on all fours like a nightmarish horde. I slammed the car into reverse, nearly crashing in my panic to escape as they chased me through those dark, haunted woods. I could still hear their spine-chilling music echoing, along with the girl's shrieking laugh fading into the darkness. Now, twenty years later, I have a wife and young son of my own. On warm summer nights when I take my boy out for ice cream, I make sure to steer clear of any trucks painted in faded hues of pink, just in case I hear that familiar warped melody drifting through the air, because some legends never stay buried for long, and that haunted ice cream truck just might be due for another harvest.